Hello, Mrs. Carson. School's out. It's time to go. Hi, baby. Mama, I've been waiting for ages. I'm sorry. I just have a few more things to do, and then we'll go get your dress. I know just the kind of dress I want to buy for my birthday. Mm -hmm. You know Dee Dee's older sister, Kim? Mm -hmm. Well, she has one. Has big sleeves like this. Mm -hmm. That you can push up like this. It comes in at the waist like this. Mm -hmm. Well, Dee Dee's older sister, huh? Don't you think that's a little too grown up for you? Oh, Mom. Oh, Look, why don't you go wait in the car? Are you going to be long? No, I'll just be a few more minutes. Okay, see you in a few minutes. See ya. What were you doing in there? All right, now answer me. Why, you little... Carson, I didn't know you were still here. This little troublemaker's Ethel Hardison. I caught her doing mischief. I know back who in the... she is, Wilson. I know who all the first graders are. Oh. Why are you still in school, Ethel? Didn't your mama come and pick you up? Well, don't worry, I'll take you home. But first, we gotta go to the office and get your address and find out where you live. Come on, Ethel. Mama, where have you been? Margie, I'd like you to meet Ethel Hardison. We're going to take her home from school. But, Mama, what about my dress? Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. We're just gonna give her a ride home, and then we'll get you dressed. I'm looking for Mrs. Hardison. Ethel's mother. No, no está aquí. Um, um, perdóneme. Um... No, no sé. Lárguense de aquí, déjenme en paz. Ethel, do you know where your mother could be? Did she tell you where she might be going this afternoon? Maybe you better come home with me and Margie. Look, I'll write your mama a note. I'll tell her that you're going to our house to have dinner with us, and then she can come and pick you up. I better wait here for my mama. Come on, it'll be all right. Come on. I want you to play with Ethel while I put these things away. But mama... Please, Margie. Okay.
Yes, I know it's not the usual procedure, Miss Kurzweil. But in this case, don't you think it would be better for Ethel if she just spent the night here? Oh, good. Yes, I'll see you first thing in the morning. Girl, you got an attitude. What's the matter with you? Didn't anybody ever tell you not to touch things that don't belong to you? Give it to me. What happened? She pushed me. I didn't do anything. She did it. You, come in the kitchen with me. Come on. Where's my mom? When's she coming for me? We don't know yet, but we'll find out something soon. Meanwhile, you can stay here with us. I know jokes. You want to hear it? Sure, I love jokes. What has eyes that can't see? <sighs> a mole. No potato. Oh, boy, that's really corny. Margie. Margie, why don't you help Ethel get washed up for dinner? Margie. Thank you. You're welcome. Ethel. Use your fork, honey. And use your napkin. Boy, this is gonna be some dinner. Don't be evil, Margie. That's for Mama. Ethel, let Margie answer the phone. Daddy, hey, it's Daddy. Hey, little bit, how you doing? Daddy, where are you? I'm still here in Sacramento. Band's been held over. Tell him I'll be right there, honey. No, Ethel, we don't, we don't eat like that around here. No, honey, don't reach across the table. Here's your glass. That's it. When are you coming home? Might not get home until late Sunday night. Oh, of course I'm going to try. You know I don't want to miss your party. I'm going to talk to the phone. I'll be right back. I love you, too. Here's Mama. Matt, how are you, sweetheart? Oh, no, that's too bad. I'm sure Margie will understand. Is my mama coming for me? Will you hush up about your mama and eat your vegetables? Don't want, don't want no vegetables. Well, Margie and I have a guest over tonight. Put your tongue back in your head and my eat those vegetables. Up, so I brought her home. Yes, I did. She wasn't there. I called the child welfare department and offered to keep her until tomorrow. You are disgusting. Hi, Margie. Where's Ethel? She's watching TV. Would you like to have a cup of tea with me? No, thanks. Mom, it's getting late. When's Ethel going home? Listen, Margie, we still haven't heard from her mother. So I've arranged for her to stay with us. For how long? At least until tomorrow. Maybe the weekend. The weekend? My life is ruined. I don't want that funky little kid in my birthday party. Margie, I'm surprised at you. She has no place else to go. Do you want her to stay with strangers or go to a shelter? I guess not. <sighs> No, but I'm here to see your mother. Margie, I thought I told you not to open the door for strangers. Oh, you must be Miss Kurzweil. Come in. 
Nice to see you. Margie. Why don't you go outside and play with Ethel? Look, this won't be long, then we can go shopping. Okay? Ethel! What are you doing there? Did that lady leave? Not yet, she just got here. She's coming to take me away. Look, don't worry about it. You want to make some mud pies? Okay, you go get some flowers for the batter, and I'll go get the pie pans. Before I see Ethel myself, perhaps you can tell me something about how she's getting along this time. This time? Oh. Well, you see, Ethel's already been placed in foster care three times. Oh, really? Her mother uh, has a drinking problem and um, some other problems, too. Uh, she hasn't been able to care consistently for Ethel. Thank you, sir. Well, what about her father? Well, we don't know much about him. He disappeared long before we got involved. What's going to happen to that child? Well, we're trying to get her in an emergency foster home until we can find out what happened to her mother. We won't know right away if she'll need a longer-term placement. Is there anything that can be done so that Ethel doesn't have to be bounced around so much? It's difficult because we've been trying to work with Ethel and her mother so they can stay together. But frankly, at this point, I'm not sure it's ever going to work out. Well, perhaps she could stay with us for the time being, of course. Well, that might work out very well for Ethel, but are you sure you want to get involved? That's right, stir it up good. My mom's been gone a long time. Okay, now smooth out the top. My mom ain't never coming back. You could put the meringue on now. How do you know? About your mom, I mean. I know. I should have stayed home. I should have waited for her. Now she's mad at me and she ain't never coming back. Hey, don't say that. It's not your fault. Your mom will show up. You want to make some cupcakes now? Do you mind if I ask you what you think would be best for Ethel? Not at all. The best thing would be if her mother would finally straighten herself out. But if that doesn't happen, we'll try to move toward legally freeing Ethel for adoption. If that could happen? Oh, yes, but there's no guarantee we'll be able to find a permanent home for her. I'm sure you can understand why that would be difficult. Well, first of all, she's already seven years old. She's interracial. Her mother is white, her father is black. She has a history of neglect, maybe even abuse. She has some complicated emotional problems, Mrs. Carson. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can consider this visit part of a home study. That'll help you get certified for foster care more quickly. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> In the meantime, I think it would be all right for Ethel to stay here. I'll see her on Monday when I come and talk to you and your husband. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope we can work something out for Ethel. Bye. play with her. That's not what I meant, honey. Oh, well, come on. Let's go in and get washed up. We gotta get a move on. I don't care what she says. I saw her take something from the store when we were leaving. I didn't take nothing. You did. I saw you. Wait a minute, Margie, please. Do you have something in your pocket that doesn't belong to you? No. Are you sure? Would you mind showing me what you have in your pocket, please? Look at this, Mom. It's your earring. I wonder what else you've got on it. Please, Margie, I'll handle this. Come here, Ethel. 
Are you gonna hit me? No, baby, I just wanna talk to you. Come here. Don't you think you better find out what else she took? Margie, I told you I will handle this. But, Mama... Margie, I want you to go outside. But why do I have to go outside? I didn't do anything. Margie, do as I say. But, Mama... No buts, out. Thanks. I baked your cake. It's in the oven. Thanks. Smells good. Thanks. You think I've been mean to you, don't you? You think I've been paying too much attention to Ethel and not enough to you. Margie, I'm just so worried about her. Why do you have to worry about her? Because I do. Because I care about people and I try to help them when they're in trouble. You don't care about me anymore. Oh, I do, Margie. I care about you more than anything. Sure don't act like it. Why do you say that? You're always mad at every single little thing I do. She's the one who's always lying and stealing and messing things up. But you're nice to her no matter what she does. Oh, Margie, I'm so sorry I've been hard on you. I really am. I love you so much. You want to help me make the frosting for the cake? Okay. You want to make it with lots of chocolate? Surprise her. Just wait till we take the cake out. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? I wasn't doing nothing. I was just looking at it. Mm-hmm. Looking at it with your mouth. 
That's not a very nice way to look at somebody else's birthday cake, you know. Don't like you. Ah, oh, nice healthy tongue you got there. Good color. Young lady, you also have a perfectly charming way with words. Hey, come here. Hey, Ethel. I want you to meet Margie's father. Don't bother, we've already met. Take that to bed with you, are you? Daddy, this is the best present you ever got me. Well, baby, you're the best present I ever got. Don't do that. Daddy, make her stop. I wasn't doing nothing. I was just looking at it. Oh, come on, you two. You're going to bend your faces all out of joint. Now, no more arguing. I'll take that. Come on. Give me some sugar. All right. Good night, girls. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Daddy. He's not your daddy. Look here. You're just a guest. And I stayed too long guest at that. My daddy's not going to let you sneak your way into our family. Well, when my mama comes, she's bringing my daddy. He's bigger and stronger than your daddy. He can whip your daddy's butt, and he can whip yours. I don't believe you. They're coming for me, and we're going to our new house. It's going to be bigger and more prettier than this ugly bitty house. You're a liar. Your mama doesn't want you, and you don't have a daddy. I don't like you. I want to go home. Well, go on home, then. I never wanted you around anyway. You stay on your side of the bed and keep your feet off me. And don't take all the covers. Lavinia, why is that girl here? Shh. Lower your voice. You'll wake the children. Did you see the bruises on that girl's back? Isn't that terrible? Yes, it's terrible. And it's terrible that my daughter has to see something like that. She's only 10 years old. She's 11, 11 to be exact. 10, 11, what difference does it make? Lavinia, what has gotten into you? What's going on between you and that child? You of all people, Matt, I thought you would understand. Understand? I don't understand anything. I come home, there's a strange girl in my house causing trouble, upsetting my daughter. Matt, she needs help. Her mother disappeared, and she has no place to go. Lavinia, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. There are people whose job it is to help kids like that. They're professionals. We don't have to get involved. We are involved. Lavinia, you don't know anything about kids like that. I do. I know you do. But don't forget, I am a mother and a teacher. And the social worker said we would make a very good family for that child. 
I don't care what the social worker said. She said that things may never work out between Ethel and her mother. She said that they may try to legally free her for adoption. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute here. You're moving much too fast. You just don't take a child like that into your home. Lavinia, that child is, is, is different from us. She's been hurt. She, she doesn't trust anybody. You're just asking for a lot of heartaches. Now, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I've been through all of that stuff. Matt, that's just the point. You know, I keep thinking about how it must have been for you, going from one place to another, never knowing if you ever belonged anywhere. What would have happened if Pearl and Bill hadn't finally taken you in? Look, I know it's a risk, but can't we give Ethel a chance? Ethel, Ethel. What about Margie? She'll never go for it. Oh, she'll come around. It'll be good for her to have a child around the house, another child. It'll be good for us. Hey, Margie. Isn't Ethel a great helper? Look how many beans she's done already. Look, she's snapping too much off. She's putting the end pieces in with the good parts. All right, then. Why don't you show her how to do it right? <laughs> See, you gotta pinch the heads and the tails off like this. If they're too long, like this, gotta snap them in half. No, don't put the end pieces in there. Throw them in the bag. That's right. That's the way. All right. Well, you know what I think, girls? I think we have enough here. Ethel, why don't you do me a favor and take these inside, all right? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> You're a good teacher. Is she staying? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, she's staying. Forever? Well, I don't know about forever. We'll see how things work out. Well, if she's staying, I'm leaving. I'm not gonna stay here if that nasty little kid's here. Ooh, I didn't notice your wings. What'd you do with them? Park them out by the gate? Teddy, it's not funny. She messes up, she starts everything, and I'm the one who gets yelled at. Well, Margie, maybe she doesn't know any better. Nobody's born knowing how to behave. What do you mean? My dear, it takes a lifetime to learn how to become a human being. Daddy? Mm-hmm. How come you never told me you were adopted? Oh, baby, come here. You see, I wasn't exactly adopted. You have to go to court to do that. So does that mean that Grandma Pearl and Grandpa Bill aren't your real parents? <laughs> real? Well, they're as real as you and I are. Ethel says she never had anything but rocks and bottles and junk to play with. Yeah, that's a real shame, isn't it? She says she never had any real toys. But I don't believe her. Why don't you believe her? I never had any toys. You didn't? Uh-uh. I was just like Ethel. You were? Mm-hmm.
here. Here's a doll for you to play with. Oh, thank you, Margie. It's only a loan. It's for you to play with until you get one of your own. If you're going to stay here, you can't always be grabbing things and breaking them. Okay. And you're gonna have to learn not to touch my things without asking. Okay, okay. Boy, have you got a lot to learn. Margie, do you think I can get a ride on your bike sometime? I guess so. You want to do it now? Come on. One more thing. If you're staying in my room, you're not sleeping in my bed. <laughs> 